But first, the city of Brussels is in an active crime scene situation. Good afternoon, everyone. This is News 6 at 4. I'm Ginger Gadsden. And I'm Lisa Bell. Julie is off. Authorities are still looking for suspects connected to the attacks. Law enforcement is looking for a third man seen with the two suspected suicide bombers. They believe he slipped away during yesterday's chaos. Jonathan Vigliotti has more on the investigation and how the city's residents are trying to heal. A diverse crowd gathered in central Brussels beside a makeshift memorial to the bombing victims. A day after the attacks at the city's airport and rail station killed at least 31 and injured more than 250, the city's spirit is unbroken. Yes. We'll get through this. It will be stronger. Daniel Palumbo and Dina Ferraraccio are visiting from Buffalo, New York. They left the rail station yesterday about 20 minutes before the bombing. I think we need to be patient, give it some time, and you know, when the airport opens, we need to look at leaving then. Belgian authorities believe at least four men are responsible for carrying out Tuesday's attack. Three of them died after detonating bombs. They include Ibrahim El Bakrawi, seen in the middle of this airport surveillance picture with another man in black, who also died. El Bakrawi's brother, Khalid, died in the blast at the subway station. A prosecutor says a laptop found in a trash bin is believed to contain Ibrahim's will, in which he says he is hunted everywhere and no longer safe. Police are looking for the third man in the photo who fled the scene. For Brussels, this is a day of reverence and defiance. Ferraccio compared it to post 9-11. We're part of history. This is part of history. A history no one wants repeated. Jonathan Vigliotti, CBS News, Brussels, Belgium. And tonight we've learned Secretary of State John Kerry will travel to Brussels on Friday. Closer to home, the Islamic Center of Orlando is voicing their views, saying ISIS is hijacking their religion and giving them a bad name. News 6 is Amanda Castro was at their news conference earlier today, and she joins us now with more. Islam is a religion of peace. These people have hijacked Islam, and they are misusing it completely. Central Florida Muslim leaders condemning the attacks in Brussels, saying the terror group behind it, ISIS, is giving their peaceful religion a bad name. These terrorist people, they are just undoing our good job. So we feel obligated to come out in defense of our religion, in defense of what we believe is right. They say adding fuel to the hate. Recent comments made by presidential hopeful Senator Ted Cruz, who is calling for more patrols of Muslim neighborhoods in America. Islamism is a political and theocratic philosophy that commands its adherents to wage violent jihad, to murder infidels, which they define as everybody else. But you're painting one community with one brush. That's no, the no, problem. No, I'm not. There's a difference. Local Muslim leaders say if that happens, there will be backlash between American Muslims and the communities they live in. It breaks the trust, it breaks the silence, and guess what? It's going to build a bigger wall between, it will become, instead of us being all as Americans, it will become us as American Muslims and everybody else's. And this is something we don't want to do. And this isn't the first time local Muslim leaders have spoke out against ISIS attacks, even as recent as the Paris bombings in November. Now, coming up at 5, we're going to hear from an intelligence and security expert who is warning the community now is the time to be vigilant and aware of your surroundings. Lisa? All right, Amanda, thank you. And our coverage continues online right now on ClickOrlando.com, powered by News 6. Then at 4.30, what we've uncovered about the eight Americans who were hurt in the attacks, including a former college basketball player and member of the U.S. Air Force. Again, that is coming up on News 6 at 4.30.